Our son, Nick, our one and only child, is with us for this Christmas time, and we're obviously delighted about that. Nick is now 27 years old. He's six foot five inches tall, so he is literally someone that I look up to each day. But I still remember when he was barely two years old, he was just a little guy, and very often Nick would wake up in the morning sooner than Satya and I would want to get up. So when we heard him uh, stirring in, in the other in his bedrooms, one of us would go in and take him from his bed and bring him in and put him into our bed where he would enjoy snuggling down between the two of us. Sometimes he would fall back to sleep, which was great for everybody. But what I noticed he would do is, as he was laying on his back between the two of us, he would, he would reach out one arm in one direction and grab onto his mom's bare elbow. And then he would reach out with his other arm and he would reach over and, and grab me by the nose and he would just rest there like that. He had a hold of us, flesh on flesh. He was grabbing us and it made him feel very much at peace because he had a hold of his parents. He knew we were there. He knew he was safe and part of the family. Sometimes you just need flesh on flesh. You need something to grab onto to know that you're safe and that you're well and that you're part of the family. The gospel writer John writes in his gospel, the word became flesh and lives among us, full of grace and truth. This Christmas season is the time that we celebrate God coming among us in the flesh and blood, in the birth of Christ, a God that is not distant and far off, but a God that we can grab onto, a God that we can hold onto. There are times in our life, it can happen to all of us, when we can start to feel uh, very alone in the world, where we can feel that, where we can begin to wonder if God is around, if God is far off, if God is paying attention. When the world gets crazy and dangerous, as it now seems to be frequently, or when we're going through a hard time, a time of illness or a time of disruption in our family, there are times when we just simply feel alone. And Christmas brings us the realization again that God is never distant and far off. God is never out of reach, that our God comes to be, to be born in our midst, to be present in our midst. And that, that's something that happens not just in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago with the birth of Christ. Of course, we celebrate that. But the message is the promises that God comes with us again and again. God is born in our midst continually in a way that we can hold on to so that we too are filled with life and peace. In our gospel lesson for today, we meet uh, Simeon and Anna, two very elderly but faithful people who were frequently in the temple in Jerusalem. And it says in the gospel lesson that when Simeon saw the baby Jesus brought into the temple, he just had to he had to go over and ask Mary permission if he could just if he could just hold the child, hold the child. Our son Nick wanted to hold on to us. Simeon wanted to hold on to the child because it says that he was. He had been given the promise by God that he would not die before he saw God's promised Messiah who would bring salvation, who would bring freedom, who would bring delivery to the people of Israel. Simeon had seen Israel go through some really hard times. He had seen how the Romans had come to, to conquer Israel and to keep them in a, in a tight grip, in a tight grip. He had seen how the top people within Israel King Herod and the temple authorities and the Pharisees, how they were constantly in political fights with each other. They constantly were, were shouting at each other in public. He had seen how the common people were having a rough time. 90% of the people of Israel experienced starvation and poverty during this time. So it was a bad time, but when he saw Jesus in the temple, he knew that this was God come in flesh and blood. God come to deliver them. God come to give them new life. And he couldn't, he couldn't resist just holding the child and treasuring the child and then saying to God, okay, okay, now you can let me go. Now you can, let, let me, you can release me because my eyes have seen your salvation come among us. Anna was there in the temple that day too. Anna, uh, at least 84 years old. And St. Luke in his gospel lesson gives a detail that turns out to be very, uh, very crucial I didn't really notice it that much at first. It, it says that Anna was a widow. 
Now that by itself didn't seem particularly surprising or noteworthy. You, you, you run into a lot of widows in the gospels and in the Hebrew scriptures. But in a very good uh, commentary on the New Testament that I was reading this last week, they pointed out that, that widows in, in first century Palestine, widows were expected to be quiet, not talking in public, uh, holding back to themselves, serving others, but not putting themselves out there. Even the word widow in the, humor, in the Hebrew language implies someone who keeps their mouth shut and doesn't talk. But what does Anna do when she sees the baby Jesus? It says that she, she bursts into song. She starts singing right there in the temple. And then she goes around to talk to everybody who was there, everybody who that, she, that she knew was waiting for God to come and deliver the people of Israel from their pain and from their suffering. It's a great, it's a great sign that, that, what does it mean for God to come among us? It means that God doesn't want anybody to be trapped in silence. God doesn't want anybody to be trapped in the background and not having anything to say. That when God comes, we are set free, set free to speak our truth, set free to live our gifts. And so Anna, Anna becomes the one who starts singing a song of praise in the temple that day when God is born in her midst. The word become flesh dwelling among us. And we see, we encounter grace and truth in that, in that word that's become flesh and blood. Martin Luther, Martin Luther liked to say that, that God is everywhere. God, the Holy Spirit is everywhere. Luther said one day, God is everywhere, even in my cabbage soup. God fills the whole cosmos. However, Luther said, God realized that if, even though God was everywhere, if God stayed invisible, people would begin to wonder where God was. If people couldn't see God, people would start to worry that God wasn't there. So, said Martin Luther, God chose to become visible to us in real, physical, uh, touchable ways. To begin with, to be born as Jesus in, in, in Bethlehem. But again, not just 2,000 years ago, Luther said God continues to come to us in, in physical ways. For example, in the sacraments, in baptism and Holy Communion. That, that when we feel the water being poured over us in baptism, or when we taste the bread and wine, we realize that we are, we are tasting the goodness of God, that God is present with us. And Martin Luther said there's also a third sacrament. There's baptism, there's Holy Communion, but he said there's a third sacrament, namely when we all gather together and live with one another as God's people, God becomes present in our very lives together. The way that Luther expressed that is he talked about the third sacrament is the, is the consolation and the conversation of the people of God. The, the consolation and conversation of the sisters and brothers of siblings of Christ. God becomes present through us when we care for one another. And so that's what we celebrate in this time. St. Paul said it another way. He said, you are the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ in the same way that Jesus was born at Bethlehem. Christ becomes born again through our lives, including through our lives together. For many years before I was elected bishop, I was a pastor down at uh, beautiful Savior Lutheran Church in Vancouver, Washington. And like all pastors, when a member of my church was in the hospital, I went to go visit them. If they were having surgery or if they were recovering from an illness, if someone was in the hospital, I'd go visit them. Well, down in the Vancouver, Portland area, there's about six major hospitals. So I'd drive around to visit my members. And one of the hospitals that I would frequently visit is I'd drive across the Columbia River into Portland and go to uh, Emmanuel Hospital. And what I came to learn very quickly when I heard the story of Emmanuel Hospital is that Emmanuel Hospital was started by Lutherans. That 108 years ago, in the year 1912, it was the Lutherans that started Emmanuel Hospital. And when they thought about this, this place, this hospital where people would be cared for, where people would be brought to health, they very thoughtfully chose the name Emmanuel, God with us. Remember that passage from Isaiah 7 that shows up again in Matthew's Gospel, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and you shall call him Emmanuel, God with us because they pictured this place where people are brought to health. And I, I thought about that every time I visited one of my members at Emmanuel Hospital, I thought about 
the whole medical staff there, when the medical staff were there, when they were, uh, when they were performing surgery, when they were bringing healing to people, when they were, when they were caring for them, that that's a sign, that's a sacrament. That's a physical sign of God's presence, that God comes to bring us life and to bring us joy. And that's what they were making happen at, the, at Emmanuel Hospital. And it struck me again, as it, as it especially has over the last nine months, how in hospitals around our country and around the world, um, people are experiencing Emmanuel, God with us, because the doctors and the nurses and the technicians and the hospital staff and the, the people that work on each floor, as they care for people, as they come to offer their lives to care for people, as they too often have to give their lives in the work of healing others, that is Emmanuel, God with us. That's a flesh and blood sign that God comes to bring us life, even in the scariest of times, in this pandemic times. And I think about, too, in this pandemic time, of people of risking their lives for others, the, the first responders, the firefighters, the police officers, the EMTs, uh, teachers at school, teachers at school risking their lives to teach children or or risking their sanity to be teaching from their home by, by Zoom. I think about grocery uh, store clerks or farm workers or, or food processing plant workers. There are so many examples these days of people who are living their lives as a sacrament, giving themselves as a visible sign of God's love and God's sacrifice for us. And you're doing that too. We're all doing that. We are all sacraments, not just when we uh, carry out some great heroic act, that would certainly be part of it, but we are doing that each day. We are Christ being born again. We are a sacrament. We are Emmanuel, God with us. When we, um, when we simply live our lives in a way that's, that's decent to each other, we are making God visible when we simply talk to each other in a respectful way. We are making Christ born in our midst when even when we're disagreeing with someone, we're, we're making the effort to, to listen and to respond rather than to just shout and insult like happens too much these days. When we simply call up a friend to see how they're doing, or when we fix a dinner and take it over and put it on somebody's porch in a little, in a little box so they have something good to eat, when we simply live our lives with the Holy Spirit moving through us and the love of Christ moving through us, that's when we are making Emmanuel, God with us, present, born into the world again. God has a dream for us. That's what Advent and Christmas and Epiphany are about. God has a dream for us. God wants life and blessing for us. God wants joy and justice for us. And so God comes again and again to be born in our midst. The God who is always with us bursts through in a new visible form with Jesus in Bethlehem, with Anna and Simeon in the temple, in our lives and in our community life as we live together and let God's life pour through us. Together, together, by the power of God, we become Emmanuel, God with us. That is what we celebrate in this holy time of Christmas. That is the gift that comes to us in this season. And that is the gift that we become, the presence of Christ's love in the world. In Jesus' name, amen.